Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Joe, some people call me Triple Jazz. And uh, today, I'm gonna be showing you how to use my brushes that you can download for free. Also, pick the mic. Your boy's getting real with it, okay? Put some respect on my name, subscribe, like the video. If you're just downloading it from my brush pack, welcome. Okay, let's jump right into it. So, I have here what happens if you just go to my Gumroad and you download the video. You don't have to give me a dollar, but I'd love a dollar. You say, I want this, download it for free. It'll get sent to your email. They are only for Clip Studio Paint. So, open Clip Studio. Find and locate where you put your brushes. I have mine in my downloads folder here. So I'm just gonna extract the Clip Studio Paint brushes, make a new folder, open it. And now I have all these brushes here. So the way that you put brushes into Clip Studio Paint is pretty simple. There we go. A little bit better. I would just right just duplicate any sort of brush you have and just drag it up here and now it creates like a new category for it and let's say that you want to add all of my brushes here so they're easy to access so you just control a control a flex everything you can just drag them in and Clipsio paint is gonna do some thinking it's gonna think it's gonna think it's gonna freeze, it's gonna freeze. So because I already own all these brushes, it's gonna give different titles for everything and add numerical values that I don't need. But we'll just start with the basics, okay? So here's the first one, just going down the list. I have these jungle brushes. They make these real, it's really nice foliage. It has a nice little hue saturation jitter. So you can go up to color jitter here. If you click on this uh, wrench, it's a subtool detail menu, which you can also access from here, I believe. Somewhere, subtool detail. And it'll pull up all the brushes settings. So this is really helpful if you want to understand how I make brushes and you want to try some yourself. I just made five or six different little icons and then I save them and I put them here in the brush tip. And then um, the color jitter is a really, really nice feature because essentially what it does, if I turn it off, everything will be the same color. I get something more obvious. See, everything's the same color. But now with the color jitter, it looks a little bit more natural in that it adds plants and different leaves of different colors and just does it organically. So that's jungle brush or jungle leaf. Second brush in my pack is McHale Workhorse. Now, I designed this specifically to imitate the work of, this is Mikhail Rakmutalan. He's a concept artist at Moon Studios. They were the guys who did Ori in the Blind Forest. And you can see that his brushwork has this really large rectangular, but really smooth look to it. And so I wanted to design a brush that looked similar. Obviously this brush won't make you as good as he is at value and color, much like light up shoes won't make you run faster, but it'll help you achieve the look more closely. So I think I did a pretty good job emulating it. I use it sometimes for my environments just for fun, but you can see this really, really pleasant, nice brushwork here. I just want his brush. I mean, be real, I just want his brush. Something really important to note with this brush, because the brush has transparency on the tip, if you have your foreground color selected, it will take from the background. So if you want just one color coming from the brush, make sure that you have the background color selected and now it has no interesting color dynamics to it. So that's a little bit kind of a weird thing, but it's also kind of cool. A little annoying that Clip Studio does that. I don't know where the option disable that is. It's giving a similar look. My work looks exactly like his. So you know I did a really good job. Basically the same picture. Cool. So moving on, you have my moss brush. I'm still working on how to have a nice moss brush, but this is pretty good, I think. Uh, I don't actually use it that often because I prefer to just paint, and I'll show you what paintbrushes I use to just paint moss, but this is still, uh, I think this is a pretty solid coffee. So, I mean, use it however you will. I think it's a pretty good cheap moss, moss brush. Next brush is this noisy nozzle. This is a really nice spray paint nozzly look to it. It's not using actual particles, it's just a very small texture that it's kind of revealing. So this is my favorite render brush. I use this to render everything. So this is the oil pastel. This is just basic in Clip Studio Paint. I think this is the default brush. 
I didn't change it, but I love it. This is one of by far one of my favorite brushes in the whole freaking program. It blends really well too, so I really like the way that it blends. It blends very almost naturally. It feels like painting. Not that I would know what that feels like, but it feels like painting. I really like this one. So this is a solid, solid brush. Okay, and then I recently made these two brushes. I think they're pretty fun. I think this is Painterly 1 and Painterly 2 on your end, but because I already own them, it's Painterly 3 and 4. So what's really nice about these brushes is you can just stamp them. So this is really cool for like moss or trees. And you can just stamp, 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 stamp. They also have, I think, really nice Painterly look to them. The Painterly 2 is a really good moss brush. I use it a lot in uh, the Gnome Home piece that I did. So I really like this one. I like both of these a lot, but they're they're pretty specific uses, I would say. I wouldn't just like render my whole environment with them. So when I moved over to Clip Studio Paint, they didn't have basic round brushes. Well, at least it took me a long time to find them. Apparently they do exist. They're right here under your airbrush panel. This is basically relatively the same, but I still wanted classic Photoshop basic round brushes. So I made them. Uh, this is the PS basic brush. So this is just, I used to sketch with this all the time. Got really nice opacity. Feels so good to use in Clip Studio Paint compared to Photoshop. Pen pressure affects the opacity and the size. Really nice, it's great for sketching. You know, sketch, sketch a face here, put elf ears on it, cause you have to. Put a hat on it, cause it's Link now. Put an eye on it, right? Boom, you're a master artist. Cool. So this is the basic round brush. It has basically the same values as Photoshop. Tested it virtually the same. So Rapidograph, this is the brush I get asked the most questions about, I think, because it's a brush I designed specifically to feel like a Micron or um, like the inking of an anime cell. So the way that I made this, you may be wondering like, well, how do you know? Because I'm a genius, okay? Most animation does not have super dynamic, like thick fins everywhere because it's harder to animate that way. We have computer tools to help us with that type of a look. But this is to mimic traditional cell animation. And it's almost a basic round brush with no size dynamics, but it has slight opacity right at the end. So when you release, it will get a tiny bit thinner and a tiny bit less opaque near the end. Um, the entire Freedom intro is lined using this, but I turn my anti-aliasing to none. So that way they're really sharp. The render brush too is literally the oil pastel brush, but round. So sometimes I want a round look instead of this like triangular one. So I just made a version that has a round end. So the running watercolor edge, I don't remember where I picked this brush up from, but this is cool for backgrounds and just kind of like getting some sort of wash down. It's super heavy on your machine though. I mean, it's like I'm using you're black right now and it's struggling to get it down. But I do like the way this looks and it blends colors really nicely. I use this for backgrounds all the time. So this is, I think, a brush that I found. It's it's available for free on the Clip Studio Paint assets page. Don't sue me. It's out there, but I just put it here so you guys can have it. It is kind of, it feels kind of weird. It feels like it could be almost like a calligraphy brush, but it's leaves. I feel like you're writing with leaves. This is a brush that I made that's supposed to be like ivy. I went outside, took some photos of ivy, kind of singled them out, and um, that's what I came up with. But you're gonna wanna use ivy colors. They also have a color jit jitter that you can turn off. And they have these weird variations in them because they're not completely opaque, and I kind of like that. Kind of nice. Sketch pencil used to be my favorite, but now, um, and it's still really good. I still like the feel of it. It's, it's a solid, I think using it a little bit smaller helps. Something a little bit smaller. It's very nice. It has good, um, a good little texture to it, and you know, whatever. It still feels really nice, but I prefer this VizDev pencil that I made. So this has a nice, look at that, buttery. Those are my two pencils. These are tiny, like little clovers you can put on the ground, um, or you could have a ton of clovers like in an area. 
Okay, we're gonna skip the smudge brushes for a second. Cool. Well, the shadow brush is actually my favorite. Yeah, this is the brush that I like. Tree cloud brush. I do like this one a lot. I used to use it a lot, but I typically paint trees and clouds by hand now. And I just want to get better at that. I usually do everything manually. You just paint some thick trees or clouds. I think it's probably better for clouds because trees typically don't have this type of texture at the end, but they do have these types of shapes. Here's my tree shape pen that I made. I love this brush. Because in anime, there's always these like very subtle, tiny little jitters to the outside of an outline of a tree. And so I made a brush that can kind of do that. And then you can use it again for like the inside of the tree. And if you're looking at an, a reference for anime, you can get pretty convincing results. Um, this is typically how I make my trees now for Freedom. Anime Leaf Brush, this is, this brush is all over Freedom. I've used it for virtually everything. Um, the ground, the trees, plants, bushes. I love this brush a lot. I, I gave it a slight color jitter, so if you want to get rid of that, I recommend going into the subtool detail menu, going to color jitter and turning it off. But again, I think it adds there's no color jitter in Freedom. I didn't use it, but I now that because this was a setting to the brushes that they added in an update a month or so ago, and or earlier this year. So this is looks really nice. It actually does. If they're on the same layer, so let's say you have this this brush here. If they're on the same layer, they blend together. But if you want to get flat shapes on top of it again, just add a new layer, and now you can add flat shapes on top. So I'll do that again just real quick. So let's say. Let's say you want to add flat colors to this, but if you paint on the same one, you'll see it starts lowering in opacity and kind of blending, which is nice. It, it's, it has its purpose. But let's say you just want to add flat leaves on top. Well, just make a new layer, and now you can add flat leaves on top. Cool. You can do that with a lot of brushes, by the way. More clovers. I think these are kind of just like small little details that I made, kind of to make like small little plants or little accents. Kind of more of the same. Just took some leaves and turn them into the bushes. I don't, again, I don't always use all these. I don't use all the bush brushes, although I don't use bush. I don't use bush brushes all the time because I like to paint bushes by hand usually. So, and plants, uh, but it has the same effect where they start blending together and that just doesn't look as good. So usually I just kind of pop a new layer on top and then we can get some nice stuff and add little accents around it. Calligraphy, I made a calligraphy brush because I don't think there is one, but this has like a really nice flat Taper. I like the way that looks. We have clouds. These aren't really going to be making a whole lot of clouds. It's similar to the running watercolor edge here where it's kind of more to just fill in the background and has this kind of like nice little dirty look to it. That's good for smoke or grunge or whatever, but it's also very efficient on your system. Like look how large I'm painting. More clover leaves. So again, you have a few options for all the different leaves. And this Copic marker here, this behaves nothing like Copic. I was trying to make a Copic marker, but Copic markers don't really blend like this. I'm like almost positive they don't blend like paint. They, they overlay each other. But this is an old brush. This is like one of the first things I threw in my pack. I'll keep it. I don't really use this brush anymore. It was kind of more of a ellipse render brush more than anything. I use it in some things. I guess I'll keep it in there. These are clovers taken directly from Iggy's delivery service, and I just ripped them. So these are authentic Ghibli clovers, 100% authentic, made in Japan. Now we get to the good stuff. I would say that my four favorite brushes that I use all the time are these four right here. Gouache Detail, Gouache Marker, and Gouache TJ. That should be thick gouache, what the flip, man? These are based off of the default gouache brushes in Clipsio Paint, which I also really like and I use regularly, but I made some modifications to them that I think are a lot better. So here's the original gouache. But what if I wanted like a really dark color? How long does it take to get in there? I gotta push really hard for that, really hard. I get frustrated if I have to push too hard, you know? I kinda just want my paint to go down when I think about it. Kind of the nice thing about digital. Okay. So I made this brush, thick gouache paint. Does exactly what you think. You just slap it down and it goes right on. Boom. I can, I can push it a little bit. I can push it a little bit. 
It's really just for smacking stuff down. Really like that one. Let's say I want to just add some details in here. Well, this brush behaves a little bit oddly, but I really like the way it behaves. So you're gonna to wanna to crank your brush size up quite a bit because of the tip, you're just gonna be using the tip very lightly. Here's what it looks like at full. And the more, the harder I press, the less paint comes out. But what I wanna do is just kinda of add a tiny little, I'm just lightly, lightly tapping, tiny little marking. And this is basically my render brush. I love these subtle transitions that goes from opaque to less opaque that happen when you just smack Smack the brush down. I use this for bushes, clouds, all the snow that I did. And it's just kind of in here. Just let's make an actual bush real quick, okay? Now I'm gonna take my gouache marker. Pretty thick, but it blends so nicely. So I'm gonna also make this quite big and just kind of start going in here. So this brush is similar to the gouache detail, but gouache detail is much more, it's like sharper. Versus the marker, much softer, much softer. But it feels like a marker and you kind of just, the way that it looks too, have these nice little streaks, very nice. <clears throat> These are my four favorite brushes by far and you can get nice little grass wisps by using this so I do that a lot too Sometimes the light hits leaves just right that they kind of turn into plastic kind of weird. Anyways, so you can kind of get the idea of like over time how this would all work together all right so now i want to go over my smudge brushes so i used to have this like irrational fear of smudging because i thought it was cheap but i do it all the time now so i guess get over it is what i would tell you so here's the three i think i gave you like four four different smudge brushes and here's what we're gonna do i just want to get them all together real quick and i'll show you what each one does Okay, <clears throat> so for starters, we have this fan smudge, which is really nice. I really like the way this looks. It's very flat and textured and kind of has these, this grit to it. And it follows the direction of your stroke. So if you start moving in circles, you'll see that it comes up with these cool swirly patterns. And I really like this. I've used it in my work before. So this is really cool. I like the way this looks. And it just has like a nice texture to it. So it gets really textured. Okay, now. Uh, I think the fingertip one, basically like if you were to just kind of smear your finger everywhere. It's kind of like a liquify tool almost, but it adds a nice blur. But it's really nice for uh, sometimes water and anything that has movement to it. I think hair is also really good. And I think this is a, just a default smudge brush inside Clipsio paint. So, but I'm just giving it to you because I, I like using it a lot. Okay, gouache smudge. So this is just a gouache brush, but it has little bit of pull to it so using the gouache smudge I can kind of pull these edges in and get like really nice kind of cool fluffy cloud pretty cool huh I like it all right now you have this regular blur and this literally just acts like you're painting with Gaussian blur it's so nice because when I was a younger up-and-coming digital artist, I would always be told, oh, you need to master the round brush and how to paint things by taking transitions, or like start painting and then grabbing colors and just pressing alt all the time, all, all the time. And then eventually you'll get like a really smooth, nice gradient result. I think this is kind of crap, a waste of time. I'd rather use this and just kind of <laughs> smooth it out. Um, so that's what it does. And the bigger you go with it, the more smooth out it'll get. So it'll just completely smooth out stuff. Super nice. Great for rendering transitions between values. This is also excellent for like a rough texture transition. So if you wanna make like metals, uh, I also used to use this for clouds a lot. 
really nice rough transition that don't look like totally smooth and kind of just ooh digital. And then lastly is this smudge watercolor. So this leaves like a really interesting looking texture and it can kind of move things around in like a cloudy fashion. And then liquefied tonescape. So again, back to like the more designer side of things, with like that nozzle and kind of getting a weird, like almost spray paint look. Just breaks things up, look like a nozzle, hit it. Cool, so that's just a quick look at my brush pack. Thanks for downloading them. Hope you find a lot of use out of them. <clears throat> Using a variety of brushes is really helpful for achieving the look that you want. And it's kind of like having a nice microphone, you know, just makes your voice a little bit more clear. So anyways, catch you all in the next video. Thanks for downloading these and I hope you have fun with them. Peace.